All right. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Raise MN webinar. I'm Jake Blumberg, the Executive Director of GiveMN. And I'm Andrea Kaufman, Director of Campaigns and Partnerships, and I'll be serving as the Project Manager for Raise MN. Thanks for taking time out of what I'm assuming is maybe your lunchtime to uh, sit here and, and learn a little bit more about this new exciting initiative that we have launched. Uh, we're really excited to be talking about this. We wanted to start by giving a little bit of an overview and a background. Um, we have probably about 10 minutes worth of information and we're gonna have some slides that we pop up uh, on the webinar um, to go over the overview. And then hopefully from there, um, you can ask some questions and we can go back and forth in that regard. Throughout the whole thing, you can just type your questions into the Q&A box and we've got folks who will be keeping an eye on it. Chances are what we're gonna try to do is save the questions for the end unless we see there's a question that we absolutely need to pause for. Uh, but generally our plan here is to give an overview, talk about some of the pay program basics and then go from there. So to begin with, we want to talk about why RaiseMN is a, a program that GiveMN is getting off the ground and why we're starting that. And so a little bit of background here, and then we'll talk about what the program looks like. To begin with, uh, since our founding in 2009, one of the things that GiveMN has really been focused on is this general mission that motivates our work, which is to grow giving and ignite generosity. And we did that in 2009 by launching GiveMN.org, and our giving day, give to the max day. And as that has evolved, we've been wanting to keep in touch with our community to figure out what are the needs of the folks that we're working with in the nonprofit sector uh, that we can start to meet and try to continue to evolve to meet. GiveMN.org is a great tool. Give to the Max Day is a great tool for fundraising to support it. But what we started hearing very loud and clear was that tools aren't always enough that there is still a real need for increased capacity for people to know what types of strategies to use to raise money better, more effectively, uh, to use tools, not just like GiveMN.org, but across the board, to have a stronger, more reliable fundraising infrastructure for the organization. So we heard this in the community, a lot of anecdotes coming our way, and so we wanted to get further into it. So we started doing some really significant uh, research efforts uh, in 2015 and in 2016. And what we found with survey data, um, particularly from uh, an organizational survey we did last spring, where we had over uh, 700 responses from organizations about their fundraising capacity and infrastructure from across the state of Minnesota, is there was some clear needs that started to be established. One, that all in, 40% of organizations, from large to small, uh, rely on volunteers alone to fundraise. They don't have staff members fundraising on behalf of the organization. <clears throat> Furthermore, 32% of organizations had, at most, one staff member who was raising money for the mission pursuit. And in many cases, that staff member wasn't solely raising money as their job description. It was uh, a mix of other responsibilities as well. So when you add that together, 72% of organizations that we heard from we're really lacking um, that, that support from a, a, a staff side to raise funds adequately towards their mission. When we asked another question, we, we also found out that the majority of organizations, 69%, said they're not confident in their current fundraising strategies to meet the needs of their mission. And so with that information, along with some experience that we've had, both through Give to the Max Day campaigns, but also through some one-off campaigns that we've done, like the Otto Bremer March Millions campaign in southeastern Minnesota, we started noticing that there are clear ways that we can help impact organizations' fundraising outcomes, particularly through trainings and interactions with those organizations to help them build out their fundraising campaign strategy. And that was the beginning of our program development for Raise MN. We spent over a year talking through with organizations and funders in the community of what this could look like. And we have now come up with uh, a program that we wanna talk a little bit more about. I'm gonna talk just a bit about what that experience of the program is gonna be like, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Andrea to talk through some of the, the nuts and bolts, the requirements, et cetera. What Raise MN really is, is an opportunity for fundraising experts, both on the Give MN staff, but also many consultants that we work with on a regular basis who are experts in the fundraising world, to interact with organizations that wouldn't maybe have an opportunity to um, interact with some of those fundraising consultants in their own day-to-day. 
these consultants and coaches, these give them and raise them and coaches, are going to work on a regular basis over the course of the year with the organizations who are part of the raise them and program to build out a fundraising campaign that will really function as a case study. What we're hoping to do is that this campaign will have its own, own outcomes. It's going to have a matching grant that we'll talk a little bit more about. It's going to be built on an individualized basis collaboratively between GiveMN coaches and the organizations who are participating. But what we're hoping to really accomplish with this campaign is not only raising some great money through this campaign, but also helping to inform the overall fundraising strategies the organization's undertaking. So the takeaways from RaiseMN participation aren't going to be just raising money through this campaign, but it's going to be focused on the larger impact of the organization's fundraising infrastructure that this program can have. And when we get through kind of the nuts and bolts and we start talking about the program, we can uh, discuss a little bit more of what that will look like. But first, let's kind of start at the beginning, the, the requirements of what participating in Raise Amen look like. Great. Thanks, Jake. Uh, so hopefully a lot of you who are listening today maybe fall into some of these requirements that we've set up as our pilot program um, this year. And you've seen all these online. You can always check them out on givemn.org slash raisemn um, is our main website for that. So our main requirements for this year um, for participation, you must have a primary service area of Dakota, Ramsey, and Washington counties here in the East Metro. So hopefully uh, you guys fit those bills. And you must be an incorporated 501c3 with an annual budget of 250000 to $1 million. And along with that, you must have at least one full-time paid staff member and are doing at least one annual fundraising campaign throughout the year. And some of those requirements are informed by the research that we've been doing on how to build out um, and create the most positive impact for organizations that both have a need, but also a foundation already in existence for us to work with uh, through the program to really help increase fundraising outcomes. And some of these requirements come from the generous support of the St. Paul Foundation, who is funding this initial pilot program uh, of Raise MN. That's where the East Metro uh, and 501c3 requirements um, in particular are coming from. Uh, related to the, the funding here and the St. Paul Foundation generously funds organizations in the three East Metro counties listed there. So we've had some questions as to why these requirements have come together and, and that's the beginning of the way that we, we wanted to answer that and set that up. Thanks, Jake. And the next thing we want to talk about is some priorities that will be given to organizations who meet uh, these priorities that we set. Um, equity is a big piece of what we believe in here at GiveMN and also the St. Paul Foundation. So we're looking for organizations that are led by leaders of color, including American Indians, and also primarily serve communities of color. Um, and we want your staff and board to be really excited about this program. You're going to be spending a lot of time um, with these Raise MN coaches, and we want everyone to be on board and really excited to participate. So we have some great um, coaches that you'll be able to collaborate with, and we hope your staff and board members will be just as excited to collaborate with them as they are with you. So when we think about this program and what Raise MN is and start digging into what the experience is going to be like, uh, there are also some benefits that we want to talk about of what we expect organizations to get out of this by participating in the Raise MN cohort. So first and foremost uh, is the experience of building this fundraising campaign. So building the fundraising campaign, which uh, is going to be an individualized strategy that organizations are able to determine along with their Raise MN coach, we don't have a campaign that all five organizations are going to have to run. Instead, what we're trying to get out of is the cookie cutter approach that a lot of fundraising conferences lend to this work of come attend a session on major gift work for 90 minutes and then go from there. What's challenging about that approach is an organization may not be in a position to know what to do with that information or what comes next, or really be able to individualize what that base curriculum looks like from a conference presentation and turn it into results. We're trying to go much further with that and meet with each organization, understand that organization's resources, opportunities, challenges. We know organizations are already out there doing great work. And what we are working to do with Raise MN is to amplify and grow the success that these organizations are already having. So what we are really doing with this approach is coming to the table with the organizations, partnering together and coming up with a collaborative strategy of what this fundraising campaign can be. And in turn, figuring out what collaboratively we can do to improve the overall fundraising strategies and infrastructure for the organization overall. So this Raise MN coach is going to be your, your 
point of contact throughout the entire year experience, uh, helping your organization build both the campaign and look at your overall fundraising strategies and infrastructure moving forward. In addition to these regular meetings that you will have with your coach, uh, we also are going to have a, an institute um, where we are bringing all five organizations together with their coaches, with other experts throughout the nine to 12 months that this program is running to make sure that organizations are getting the attention they need, having the time to do some of this work and planning because we know how hard it can be sometimes to budget time and the daily work that we all have as nonprofit leaders to actually think about strategizing and, and planning and looking forward. So we're gonna be carving out that time in addition to those one-on-one -on -one meetings with your coaches. Uh, at three junctures. And it's also going to be a great opportunity for Raise MN organizations to come together, learn from one another, interact with one another. And then finally, in collaborating and planning this campaign, uh, which is really one of the exciting outcomes from Raise MN, we also, because of the generous support of the St. Paul Foundation funding this pilot, Give MN is going to be able to offer $10,000 matching grants to these campaigns. And so organizations can look to build with their Raise MN coach and our support a campaign that will, on its own merits, raise $10,000 or more, but will also be matched up to $10,000 by a grant by participating in Raise MN. So if you start thinking about the really measurable outcomes from this, certainly that campaign and $10,000 worth of matching dollars, which we know is really such an important part of a successful campaign from the thousands of campaigns we have helped run through GiveMN.org, through Give to the Max Day, through other events that we've partnered with. We know that match can be the major difference between success or failure, and we want to provide that launching point for organizations. So uh, when you look at why would you want to participate in Raise MN, there are the benefits of that one-to-one -one coaching and relationship that we're gonna build out, the benefits of having your board and staff involved with uh, this collaborative approach throughout the course of a year, and when all is said and done, fundraising is fundraising, and there will be dollars on the table, both from the match and the campaign that we build out together uh, that will benefit your mission work. And our, our view on that is that we hope that we're positioning you by building out this campaign for an organization to then have something that you can repeat annually from there on. So it's not a one-time hit of this $10,000 campaign, but it's on into the future, a really sustainable strategy that helps your organization's mission pursue. So those are some of the program benefits that uh, we really anticipate organizations walking away from uh, through this pilot. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is the application and the timeline itself, because uh, the application <coughs> deadline is quickly approaching on uh, March 24th, <coughs> excuse me, at 5 p.m. So please make sure you check out the application. There is a downloadable uh, portion of the application if you want to download it and then fill it out um, as you go. But it is a really simple or what we feel is a simple application. We don't want we didn't want you spending a ton of time on this, but we also needed to get some great information from you. So along with your application, we do need these attachments that are listed there. Um, and these are also listed on the website for you to refer back to. But please make sure that you attach all of these to the application and send it. You're going to send it directly to me at info at um, So you'll be able to send it right to me. If you have any questions while you're going through that, please feel free to reach out. And the next things we'll talk about is kind of the timeline of Raise MN and the whole program. So after the applications have all been collected, we're going to conduct phone interviews um, with the Raise MN coaches, uh, some of the Give MN team, and some other evaluators that we're going to be working with throughout this program who you'll be hearing about. Uh, so those phone interviews will be April 6th, 7th, 10th, and 11th. And then we will then announce the selected organizations following that once we've gone through the phone screen. And during that phone screen, we'll want um, the executive director or the highest paid staff member there and also um, whoever else you've documented as the main uh, contact for the program. And then once uh, the phone interviews have been conducted and we've announced the organizations, we're going to come to you and learn a little bit more about what it's like to be on site with you with the Raise MN coach and possibly some other uh, staff members and uh, evaluators as well. And we're coming up to the Raise MN conference and training May 17th and 18th that Jake highlighted a little bit where you'll be able to learn from each other and meet with your coaches. And campaign work will begin in May or June. And as you can see with the campaigns themselves, they do, they can go all the way through April of 2018. So depending on what the organization's calendar looks like, uh, you and your coach will be able to work out the exact dates of when it's going to really work best for you to run that campaign. 
And then through September and October is where we'll have another day conference, half day conference, and then we want to get into progress reports and evaluation. We really want to understand what you learned as an organization, what your staff learned, what changes you were able to implement, and all the great things that you learned and the success that you had with RaiseMN. And I, I think one of the things that sometimes happens, because GiveMN, we're obviously so closely aligned with Give to the Max Day, and this new program, when we start talking about getting a fundraising campaign off the ground, um, a, a few folks have asked, is this a Give to the Max Day campaign? Is that what you're signing up to, to learn about? And that's not what we're talking about. We're really talking about working with you as an organization to find the best opportunity for a standalone campaign in your organization's calendar, individualizing it, figuring out what type of campaign it should look like. Should it be a digital campaign? Should it be another type of campaign? And really we're focusing on meeting organizations in their opportunity space and building strategies from there, not prescribing saying it needs to be done on this date at this time. We're really trying to build a strategy from the organization's perspective and lending support versus dictating what this campaign has to look like and you're gonna participate in our campaign. This is much more of a collaborative approach between the coach, raise men, and the organizations. And this could be an or, uh, excuse me, an opportunity that is already happening in your organization. Maybe it's an annual giving campaign that we're just going to improve upon. So it could be something that you're already doing really great, and we're just going to add a little bit to it. Absolutely. So at this moment, we'd love to just pause and um, apologize that we can't have you chime in via voice uh, or video um, with our platform, but uh, I am hoping that some questions have come in and um, we can start answering those and feel free to keep adding them and we'll, we'll take this time and answer whatever questions there are. Yeah, we've got one question. Um, when you move to out-state organizations? So the, the question is, where our focus area right now is in the East Metro, is that going to become a, a greater Minnesota opportunity in the future? We certainly hope so. We're in conversations with funders right now, and really right now this is a pilot as we build RaiseMN for the first time. We're gonna be learning as much and probably a lot more from this process than even our organization participants because we're really hoping that this is a program that is gonna be scaled and is going to have more than just five participants in the East Metro each year. We're really grateful that the St. Paul Foundation is giving us this start, but our hope is, is that we're gonna be able to have this program and expand it, not just to greater Minnesota, but throughout the Metro as well. So very much eyes on greater Minnesota in the future. We just don't know exactly what that'll look like and when that'll, when that'll be happening. That's our cue so far. Okay. Well. Um, Send any your questions if you have Absolutely. <laughs> questions uh, about this, questions uh, about anything that you would like to uh, chat about. I see one more here. Um, is this program going to be an ongoing program or a one-time opportunity? So we know we will be doing this in, in the East Metro um, for, for multiple years. Um, this is the first cohort, this first group of five organizations. We know it's going to be in 17 and 18. Our intention and our belief and the conversations that we've had is that, that we will be able to do multiple cohorts, multiple annual cohorts moving forward. Our intention from this is to pilot it and then figure out to what scale and to what opportunities we would look at in 2018 and beyond. So we do not anticipate this being a one and done thing, um, but we're talking about fundraising, so we have to be honest that you know funding is always uh, a question for any program, uh, but we are feeling very confident that um, funders are gonna wanna support this moving forward, and we certainly anticipate this being a, a long-term program. Got one more here, or maybe a couple. Uh, will you consider organizations with an annual budget over one million? So this is probably our most frequent question so far that we've been getting emails about is, is the budget requirement. And where we are right now is that in the research that we have done, um, based off of both GiveMN campaign experience previously, as well as some external research that we have done, we, we had to figure out a box for this initial pilot program. And so we really felt like the greatest potential um, support that we could provide was for organizations in that quarter million to million dollar budget uh, area. And, and so that was informed by a couple conversations and looking at other programs across the country as well that do um, fundraising capacity support of where is the, the need that can be amplified the most or addressed the most. So right now we, we have to focus on, on this, this um, cut of 250000 to a million dollars. I mean, if your annual 
annual budget was a million dollars and 500 last year, that's different than it going well outside of it. If it's a rounding error, that's one thing. But if you're a 1.1, 1.5, $2 million organization, uh, we'll hope for the future that we're going to be able to provide cohorts with either wider bands of participation or different bands of participation. But we have to stick pretty close with kind of an exception around rounding um, between that quarter million to a million dollars for this group of five. Okay. Another year, how long does the one paid staff member uh, need to be employed with the organization? If you have a paid staff member who's employed when you're applying, that checks the box. We're not going to go into tenure or anything else. Okay. And do all committed participants need to be able to attend all sessions and meetings? So we have um, a short answer, yes. We would love for the people who said they're going to be a part of it to be a part of it. Uh, there's going to be, you're going to assign one person that's going to be the primary contact, which we would hope that they would work mostly with the raise them and coach. Um, and then they would be able to either take it to the other person that is on staff there or the board members. But we would really like as much participation as possible through all the other meetings or maybe it's phone calls or whatever else you're set up with your raise them and coach. And then also the conferences, I think are really going to be important um, for everyone who's participating to be involved in. I, I think one of the reasons that it's important for folks who sign up to participate at this at the beginning to be as involved as possible, with always the exception that life happens. Um, and you know, someone might have something comes up that prevents them from attending one session. Where you're not gonna get kicked out of the program because one person didn't come to one session. But the expectation is really because of what we are hoping the outcomes can be from this program. Often the way that organizations have historically tried to deal with building fundraising capacity has been to hire a development staff member. And the hope is that that development staffer will work magic and the whole fundraising strategy and infrastructure for an organization will change because of that one person. And if you're lucky enough to hire that magic person who wants to stay at your organization for years at a time, that might be the answer. But what we know is that the annual turnover rate for development professionals is around 18 months. And so what we want to do is build capacity for the organization, not for one individual. That's why we want a board member and a staff member plus a third from one of those two categories to be involved. Because what we're hoping to do and what we're striving to do is to improve organizational fundraising capacity, strategy, and infrastructure, not just impacting one development professional's uh, abilities to do so. So short answer is we have an expectation that the participants will attend um, the sessions. If there is something that comes up, that we will always make an exception for it. But one of the reasons that this can work so well is that the Raise MN coach, who you're going to be meeting with on a regular basis, you will be scheduling with that person. So our hope would be is you'd pick a time that your participants and that coach can make work. That's why we don't just have a, a full calendar of you have to make each date work. There's only those three dates that we will share with organizations well in advance uh, that would be dictated. And the rest is going to be between the coach and the organization to determine the best time to meet. Okay, perfect. There's one more. Uh, the, Tiffany asks uh, that there's an emphasis that there's regular coaching um, and one-on-ones throughout the program. What's the time commitment on a weekly or monthly basis? So I, I think it, it's good to start by saying this is our first time doing it, so there will be some learning on that. I think what we're, we're planning on is probably a, a monthly connection, a monthly meeting. But what we know is as a fundraising campaign begins to ramp up and get off the ground, meeting every month might make sense when you're beginning the strategy session. But as you get close to the fundraising campaign itself, launching it and then um, running through the finish line, you might have more frequent meetings there, which may mean there are some months you don't have a meeting at all, and there are some months that you're getting together on a weekly basis right before the campaign. Again, what we're hoping to do with the coaching uh, strategy that we have here is for organizations to be able to build that out individually. So I think when all is said and done, it'll probably average out to about a meeting a month, but some of those meetings may take place in a more compressed timeline based off of the campaign strategy that you build with your coach. Uh, question, will some of the coaching recommendations be made public for or other organizations to use? Absolutely. That's part of what we're striving to do with Raise MN is not only scale it to be able to involve more organizations in the future, but also to take a lot of the lessons learned from these campaigns and be able to share that more widely. 
what we're not trying to do is build out secret strategies that don't benefit our sector at large. Instead, what we're trying to do is really have the greatest impact possible in helping organizations learn better fundraising strategies, improve the fundraising strategies that they have. So Raise MN will start being a resource as well for organizations to go find some of the lessons learned as we build this curriculum as we go. And we'll hope that organizations will want to participate in some storytelling around this. We believe, and it is our full intent and expectation, that these are going to be five great experiences for the organizations who participate. You're going to raise some money. You're going to learn how to raise money. You're going to build some great relationships in the community. And we'll want to share that story and the lessons learned with other organizations. Because our premise of growing giving is that we all do better when we all do better. Thank you, Senator Wellstone. Um, and so that's what we're striving to do here. And we'll share a lot of lessons learned as we go along and we'll be announcing how that looks as, as things grow. Okay. That's all the questions right now. Um, toss it back over to you. If any more questions pop up, uh, we'll ask them before the end of the webinar. Great. Do you mind just popping up that last slide then, Tom, our, our info slide? Andrew, do you want to tell people how they can get in touch with you? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, GiveMN.org slash RaiseMN is where you'll find all the information about the application and more details of what we're looking for for organizations for, to participate. And then again, go ahead and email me or call me at any time. Um, we will try to answer your questions as quickly as possible. And uh, we'd love to have you all participate and hope you find this worthwhile. And you know, it's an info at givemn.org email address. And I know that sometimes when I see that, I go, oh man, no one's actually reading these emails. What is actually happening, the GiveMN strategy that we do with our help desk and um, with our info box is we try to decrease the amount of time it takes for you to get an answer back. So we actually have an entire team who has access to this mailbox. Andrea will be the, the point of contact, but if there's an immediate question that needs to be answered and Andrea is in a meeting and one of us can answer it, we have eyes on that. So uh, don't fear the info box. Uh, there are not just one set of human eyes. There is an entire GiveMN team um, reading those questions. Anything else, Tom and Mike? No, no more questions that I can tell. That's it. We really hope that you apply. We really look forward to um, working with the organizations through Raise MN. This is a really exciting opportunity. We're grateful to the St. Paul Foundation for allowing us to get into this space. And we believe that this is the start of some really great things. And we invite you to join us on that. We're excited for you to join us. Let us know if you have questions. And we look forward to seeing your application no later than March 24th. Yeah, now you have a half an hour of your time back to work on the application. Get into that application. We hope lots of people pop out there right now. Thanks and let us Thank know if you, you have any other questions.